My name is Martin Roberts and I've worked in conservation in County Durham uh, for the best part of 30-35 years. Firstly with the Durham City Council and latterly at English Heritage. And dealing with all the buildings I've dealt with over that time, you cannot escape the name of John Cousin. He was a great man in the 17th century, in two periods of the 17th century, either side of the Civil War. And he led the regeneration, we would call it nowadays, of uh, Durham City. Uh, the buildings of the castle and the cathedral and the college, which we see all about us here, are all down to him. Uh, he erected many of them, he repaired many of them, and he tended to put his coat of arms on most of them. I often think if you stood still long enough, he'd put his coat of arms on you. And he came with a reputation. He'd been selected by Charles I to be the master of ceremonies of his coronation a couple of years previously. And he also came with an agenda because he was one of that group of people of high Anglicans who believed that the church needed greater uh, decoration, the liturgy needed to be richer against the traditional Elizabethan church which was very puritanical and simple in its outlook. And he began in 1624 with the assistance obviously of the dean and bishop who were like-minded to carry out those kinds of improvements in the cathedral. The improvements that Cousin and his fellow canons were carrying out after 1624 were not universally approved of. And it was in 1628, in July of that year, that a fellow canon, Peter Smart, who was a Puritan by background, stood up and in the sermon he denounced the Dean and Chapter in very powerful terms. If religion consists of altar ducking, cope wearing, organ playing, piping and singing, crossing of cushions, kissing of clouts, oft starting up and squatting down, nodding of heads and whirling about till their noses stand eastward, without doubt there is no religion in that church. After the sermon, Smart was brought before the Dean. He refused to recant and was subsequently brought before a church court. He was fined and stripped of his offices, but he refused to pay the fine and was sent to prison for 11 years. And it was only in 1640 that he was released by the Long Parliament, who then accused Cousin. And realising this, Cousin fled to France. And he was soon joined by the family of Charles I, Queen Henrietta Maria and her family, who'd been sent to France once the Civil War got underway. And so for 15 years he served her and her family, and of course that included the young Charles II-to-be. And so it was back in 1660 when they returned with the restoration of Charles II that he was richly rewarded for his loyalty uh, by being given the, the Bishopric of Durham. We know that when John Cousin arrived back at his castle, he found it a damaged building, and the same was true of his cathedral. He set about in 1660 uh, with the Dean and Chapter, restoring this fine High Anglican woodwork of the choir stalls here, which were started immediately on his return, uh, the great screen which originally stood across the crossing of the church, and the great triumph at the West End, which is a baptismal font. We don't know what John Cousin did during his time in exile in Paris, but he must have visited the Bibliothèque Mazarin because he used the design of that library here in his own library on Palace Green in 1667. John Cousin had been involved with books all his life. He'd been a librarian at the age of 25, and when he returned to Durham as bishop in 1660, he brought back his collection from France and from his college at Peterhouse. And the beauty of that library is that 330 odd years later it is still a library and that's one of the great advantages of so many of Cousin's buildings that they're still being used for the primary purpose they were used in his time. The castle ceased to be the home of the bishop in the 1830s when it became the first college of the new university. The kitchens remain as they have for the last 500 years. The great hall is still in use and there are two formal dinners there each week. This is John Cousin's Great Black Staircase, built in 1661-62. We don't know what the wood is, but we know that it was painted black from the start, and it has this magnificent, uh, very ergonomically designed, grippable handrail and beautifully carved work in, in the body of the staircase, of the Baroque style. The entire staircase originally had ball finials and pendant drops, as you can see over there, in the shape of pineapples, very fashionable at the time. But very soon after it was built, the great cupola which lit the whole staircase started to press down on the structure. And they very soon had to cut off the finials and pendant drops and wedge in these, well they're almost like pit props it seemed, very crude and they must have done it very quickly to prevent the whole building collapsing and these have remained here ever since. It was a very important staircase, easily the best in the northeast of England at the time and it was much copied by lesser people and lesser craftsmen but it, it was a great influence on staircases throughout the region. A 
as Bishop of Durham, John Cousin was one of the most powerful men in the north of England. He was one of the prince bishops, and as such he inherited medieval powers which were equivalent to being the king in the northeast of England. Uh, those powers were reduced by his period, but he was still immensely an influential man. And that power is expressed in Durham, because he was an Anglican figure of national importance uh, in England, uh, they were expressed in Durham through his buildings and through the furnishings that he endowed them with.